What's up, everybody? My name is Erin, and welcome to the Mad Maker Studio, and welcome back to Lamplight City. Let's review our case book. So we're in the current case's Burning Desires, where Miss Desiree Lathan was found burned to ashes under mysterious circumstances. May, maybe, maybe not spontaneous combustion. Uh, so we need to, we still need to go back and investigate the Gascon Supper Club. Um, find a way to speak with attorney Jonas Usher. Um, have Dr. Ed Edwards, the coroner, examine Desiree's ashes. So we'll, I think we have to go back to the police department. Uh, but let's let's start out by go visiting our our friend at the Spectre Society. We are Angela Maxwell. We're already uh, real tight with her. We're in the club. And let's recap on what we know about spontaneous Welcome human back, combustion. Oh, oh my! I sense oh, the dang, I stench of the tomb. It must mean a spirit is trying to make contact. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, ma'am. I completely forgot that these ashes in this pewter mug that we got from the bar that are just free hanging in my pocket have an awful odor. Uh, but let's let's talk to you first, and then we'll go read our book again. Could I ask you about some things, Miss Maxwell? Certainly, darling. But make it quick. It smells awful in here. Are you familiar with a woman named Desiree Lathan? Yes, she came to see me just last week. She told me she was doing research for an article she was writing for Brentwell magazine. What sort of research? She asked me a few questions and looked at my books. That was all. She wasn't here for very long. And what was she researching? Something about spontaneous human combustion, I believe. Did you know that Desiree Lathan is dead? What? My god, no! I didn't. What happened to her? She was found burned to death in her bed. How awful. Do you have any idea how this may have happened? There are a number of possibilities. But if she was in the middle of researching spontaneous human combustion, and then to have this happen, it can't be a coincidence. Are you suggesting she herself was a victim of spontaneous combustion? One need only compare the circumstances of her death with the facts, darling. She can't be serious, can she? Well, it got added to our casebook, so it's it's there as a possibility now, a possible outcome. What can you tell me about spontaneous human combustion? I'm not overly familiar with the subject, but I do have a book about it on the shelf back there. You are welcome to look at it if it will help. I may, but I'd like to know what your understanding of it is. Well, I believe it is when the human body inexplicably catches fire and burns. It usually occurs among elderly women who drink to excess, and very little fire damage is caused around the body. That's really all I know, darling. It's not a very agreeable subject for study now, is it? Thank you for the information. It was very enlightening. It was my pleasure, darling. Yeah, I was just thinking, we've been carrying these ashes around for a long time, even after we give them to the coroner. We're going to still smell bad for the rest of the day, at least. This all sounds strangely familiar, but spontaneous human combustion can't be real, can it? Then again, sometimes the simplest explanation is the correct one. Alright, now to recap, um, spontaneous human combustion is a highly controversial subject, but remains popular among scholars and aficionados of the occult and unexplained. The term refers to a death from a fire originating without any apparent source of external ignition. The fire is believed to start within the body of the victim. The 1823 book Medical Jurisprudence states that commonalities in recorded cases of spontaneous human combustion include the following characteristics. One, the victims are chronic alcoholics. Two, they are usually elderly females. Three, the hands and feet usually fall off. Four, the fire has caused very little damage to things around the body. A residue of greasy and fetid ashes is left behind. Most physicians and investigators strongly believe that spontaneous human combustion is a product of alcoholism. So I do not believe that the spontaneous human combustion is going to be the conclusion to this case. It's definitely a possible outcome. I think we can probably, you know, end it right here and just say, hey, this is this is what we got. But I do think maybe it was someone close to her knew she was writing this article and used it as a means to 
or they create a scene or situation where this is this looks like is what happened to her. I'll be going now. May the spirits guide you to that which you seek. Right, um, before we drop these ashes off, let's let's make let's make another trip to the supper club and see what what funny things our friend there will say. Oh, what is that? I think the water closet may need a cleaning. Will you still talk to me? Excuse me. Ugh, get away from me, you horrid man. You smell like rotting flesh. You're not gonna make too many friends with those ashes in your pocket, Miles. Okay, everyone else talk to me. Dear Lord, what is that smell? You step in something out there, Fordham. Private investigation is a dirty job, Upton. You know that. Got a moment, Upton? Yes, but let's make this quick. See, we could wrap up the case and just be like, yo, spontaneous human combustion. But as always, there's 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 layers to these cases. Would it be possible for me to access the mortuary? The mortuary? What for? I'd like to consult with Dr. Edwards. All right, but be careful. Make sure you don't let Snelling see you back there. Oh, I'm sure he'll smell me coming a That's mile it for away. Now. Better get back to it then. Uh, Dr. Edwards' lab was always a fascinating place to learn about death. A bit less so now that I'm quite the expert. Oh, did I miss cleaning up some bit of that last corpse? Oh, Fordham, what brings you down here? Hello, Edwards. I was wondering if I could pick your brain. Yes, yes, of course. There's one in a jar over there, and I may have another one around here somewhere. That coroner humor never gets old, does it? Anyway, let me know what you want to discuss. This fellow's not going anywhere. Uh, looks rather fresh. There's a plaque at the base of the jar that says H. Putnam. Well, at least he died with a smile on his face. Sort of. I'm pretty sure I saw Edwards weighing his lunch on this once. I remember when Edwards used to keep his collection of preserved reproductive organs on this shelf. He must be getting soft in his old age. Or perhaps that's exactly what happened to his collection. A fine example of well-developed deltoids, latissimus dorsi, and gluteus maximi. The brain is truly a fascinating organ, if only more people used it. Assorted lab equipment for setting things on fire or causing explosions. You know, the perfect way to pass the time. You've seen one dissected torso, you've seen them all. It sure is a lot of rubbish crammed inside our upper bodies, isn't there? I wonder if Edwards ever got around to fixing this typewriter. The letter E being out of alignment always made his reports a nightmare to read. It's important to keep your hands clean when dealing with dead bodies. After all, you never know where they've been. Until after the post-mortem exam, anyway. This provides the room with just the right amount of heat. Unlike the incinerators in the crematorium. Talk about overkill. I'd say being hooked up to that machine was the worst experience of my life. Except I was already dead at the time. Imagine a giant mosquito sucking out all your blood and then replacing it with formaldehyde. Not very pleasant. Edwards keeps assorted bottles and specimens in there. Nothing too remarkable that I can see. Nice pair of legs. All right, let's go for why we're here. Unless... I feel sorry for the poor slob who has to clean that out. There's still more things to click on. Seems to be empty for now. That's most definitely a good thing. Okay. Pardon me, Edwards. Yes? I've got these human ashes from a crime scene. Straight to the point. I knew I liked you for a reason, Fordham. Who do they belong to? Desiree Lathan. She was a Gascon Grand Dame. Oh, of course. I heard about that case. 
She was found burned in her home, wasn't she? That's right. I meant to go over there later today. Well, then I suppose I've saved you the journey. Would you have a look at these? Does this mean you're officially on the case? Not as such. In fact, I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention I'd been here. Ah, a clandestine operation. Sneaking around under Snelling's nose. I don't have much of a choice. I'm pretty much persona non grata around here these days. Well, you're always welcome in my mortuary. Preferably while still breathing, of course. Anyway, I'll just take those ashes off your hands. I'm sure your social life will soon improve. Yes, I was making quite the impression. This is an interesting choice of container. It was either that or carry them around in my bare hands. Well, I'm a bit busy right now, but I should have something for you within the next couple of hours. But you do realize the information won't be exclusive to you. I'll have to pass it on to the detectives on the case. Naturally. That just gives me more of an incentive to work quickly. I found this piece of burned cloth at the crime scene. Could you take a look at it for me? This is from the Lathan case? It is, yes. What do you need me to look at exactly? It appears to have some oily residue on it. Interesting. I'm afraid I have my hands full right now, but you can feel free to use my workbench if you'd like. To do what exactly? Surely they taught you something about basic chemical analysis when you worked here. Yes, well, I always let Bill handle the more technical aspects of our cases. A real pity I'm not around to help you anymore, isn't it? But I'll have a look and see if something comes back to me. Keeping busy down here, Edwards? Oh, you know me. I've always got my hands in someone. Edwards always did have a way with words. This postmortem was just a formality, really. The victim died of a gunshot wound to the head. Last week, though, we had a real kicker. An old man was brought in, and though he appeared quite dead, I was told that he'd been in a trance for over half a year. Apparently, he was hypnotized right at the point of death, and somehow managed to remain alive in a fashion. In any case, when I began performing the exam, his entire body decayed into a putrefied mess within minutes. It was fascinating. Uh, should you really be giving me these details, Edwards? Oh, hell, I don't mind telling you, Miles. It's not like you're going to go tell Snelling. Besides, you're the only one who's come to see me all week. Dead people make lousy conversationalists. Hey, I take offense to that statement. <laughs> oh, I like Dr. Edwards. He's an, an, an eccentric fella. So, Snelling got promoted to chief, did he? Yes, not too long after you left. Personally, I think he took advantage of your situation to change things around here. Was it really that much of a shock? Bill and I weren't exactly the most well-liked detectives on the force. But you were respected. You two solved over 350 cases in 15 years. You were an institution. Damn right we were. It's so easy for people to resent their more successful peers. Ah, Edwards. Nice to know someone missed us. You didn't examine Bill after he died, did you? Ha! <laughs> he wishes. No, there was nothing inconclusive about his death. He died from impact after falling from the roof of a building. Why, was there something else I should have looked into? No, I was just curious. As fond as I am of Edwards, it would have been a bit much for him to go poking around my insides. Thanks. That's all I needed to know for the moment. Any time, Fordham. All right, let's see what we can do here. Oh, it's been ages since we got to do any type of chemical analysis. This will be grand. Dr. Edwards, could you remind me what it is I'm meant to be doing? Yes, of course. Go ahead and get as much of that oily residue from the cloth into the Petri dish. Good. Now add some of the chemical reagent in the red bottle to the dish. Aha! The oil turned orange. Yes! The reagent has caused a chemical reaction and changed the oil's color. Isn't science fun? Quite. But how does this help me? I have some samples of the most common types of flammable oils on the shelf. Go ahead and add them to the test tubes. Good. Now simply check each one with the reagent to see if you can find a match. And if I don't find one? Then I suggest going out and looking for more oil samples. All right. Looks like ammonium chloride. Won't be of much use to us in this experiment. Too 
bad. I would have bet on it being coal oil. So much for kerosene being the culprit. Well, oil be damned. Looks like that's not a match. <sighs> oh, you love it. Yes, I figured we'd have to go back out after seeing this fourth empty test tube. Obviously, none of these these are going to be the answer. But we had to try. We had to try and see. All right, now, now let's go. Go back to the supper club. See if she'll talk to us now. Miss Robino. Oh, it's you again. Okay, she's a lot more to friendly ask me now. More questions. Yes, if you wouldn't mind. No, no. Be my guest. Is the name Peter Andrews familiar to you? Peter Andrews? Is he still around? I'd be able to tell you that if you told me who he is. He's desperate. That's who he is. A lovesick fool who is obsessed with Desi. Sent her love letters all of the time. Would you know where I can find him? Why would you want to? Because I want to question him about Miss Lathan's death. Oh, I suppose that makes some sense. All I remember Desi telling me is that he worked at the Bank of Vespuccia, a clerk or some such. <laughs> Imagine. Thank you, that's very helpful. Thanks for your time. I'll let you get back to your drink. Thanks, sweetheart. All right, the Investigate the Gascon Supper Club is still on our list, so I think we'll have to come back here. So let's try talking to Miss Pita Andrews at the Bank of Vespuccia. Mr. Fordham. Ah, Mr. Dupre. Good to see you again. Is, is all well with you? Absolutely. Everything is wonderful. Because of you, this city has finally seen Laura Dupre for the monster she is. I cannot thank you enough. I suppose you're welcome? Now then, is there anything I can help you with? Yes, I'm looking for Peter Andrews. I was told he worked here. That's right. His desk is just over there. Thank you, Mr. Dupre. Lovely seeing you. What an absurd contraption. Imagine needing all those extra bits and bobs just to tell the time. I tried using one of these automatic money dispensers once, but I nearly got my arm stuck inside. They still got a long way to go. Oh, Bill, how did you stay alive up until the very first tutorial case? Yeah, impressive bit of hardware. It would take a criminal mastermind to rob this bank. Mr. Andrews. Yes? Miles Fordham, private investigator. May I ask you a few questions? Yes, I suppose that would be fine. Have a seat. I'd rather stand if it's all the same to you. Now then. <laughs> Didn't want to animate that, that chair sitting down part, huh? <laughs> exactly what is your role here at the bank? I'm the manager. I handle the new accounts, organize finance, that sort of thing. Have you been here long? Coming up on 17 years. Is this at all relevant to your investigation? Anything could be, Mr. Andrews. Do you know Desiree Lathan? Desiree Lathan? No, I can't say the name rings any bells. Don't lie to me, I found your love letters. You say you don't know Miss Lathan. Would you care to explain these? Why are they crumpled up? Did she throw them out? And why do you have them? <laughs> I just love catching people like this. Relax, Mr. Andrews. Let's take this slowly. Now, I can assume by your reaction that these are your letters? Yes, they are. So why did you lie about knowing Miss Lathan? I... I promised my wife I would cut off contact. 
but you clearly didn't. The most recent letter is from two weeks ago. Did she hire you? Your wife? No, that's not why I'm here. Ah, well, that's somewhat of a relief then. So your wife knows about your correspondence with Miss Lathan? Well, I don't know if you could really call it correspondence. Desiree never wrote back. But yes, Peggy, er, uh, that is to say Margaret found out shortly after we married. Exactly how many letters did this bounder send, I wonder? At first I tried to make it out that she was just a friend, but she found one of the more intimate ones while I was writing it. I see. And what was her reaction? What do you think? I still have the scar from the glass that she threw at me. You're still married? Oh yes. Margaret comes from a very strict Catholic family. They would sooner she die than divorce. It hasn't been easy. She makes sure to take full advantage of the situation. Always buying herself the most expensive jewelry and spending a fortune on food for those wretched cats. I swear, they're better fed than I am. Where might I find Mrs. Andrews? I'd like to speak to her. Our house is at 713 Longfellow Street, just at the edge of Gascon. But I warn you, it's a goddamn menagerie she's got. I'd stay away if you're averse to being covered in animal hair. I'll take my chances. Were you aware of Miss Lathan's death? What? Desiree is dead? No. She was found burned to death. Nobody in her bed. reads the newspaper You're in lying. this game. You have to be. I'm afraid I'm not, Mr. Andrews. Do you, do you at least oh, listen to Desiree. the radio? Apparently not. Do you have any idea who might have wanted to kill her? No. She was a marvelous woman. Well, I'm sorry to have to be the bearer of bad news, but at least you won't have to worry about writing any more letters. That isn't funny, Mr. Fordham. Yes, it was. Don't listen to him. Thanks for your time, Mr. Andrews. Okay, so we need to speak with Margaret Andrews now. We're not going to report to Upton to declare Desiree Lathan's death as a result of spontaneous human combustion. She'll think we're silly. Uh, so let's go talk to Margaret Andrews first, and then we'll go back to Dr. Edwards. How about that? Or can I can I see anything else? Uh, can I catch up with my boy Jean Dupree? We haven't got anything else to ask him about right now. Dang it! Nice house. It definitely screams. Don't be the squirrels. Person lives here. Speaking of which, that must be Mrs. Andrews over there with those rodents. Rats with fluffy tails. How anyone can find them endearing is beyond me. Excuse me, Mrs. Andrews? May I help you? I'm Miles Fordham, private investigator. I was hoping you could answer a few questions. Hmm, all right then. Don't worry, my darlings. Mommy only needs a moment to speak to the nice man, then I'll give you all the nuts you can eat. My little friends just adore nuts, Mr. Fordham. Guess that explains why squirrels are so attracted to her. Uh, no, you don't don't keep animals like that as pets. Hopefully she keeps she leaves them outside. But don't ever bring a squirrel or a raccoon or anything like that into your home. Just don't do it. Do you have any hobbies or pastimes, Mrs. Andrews? Well, of course. I do a bit of knitting and I take care of my pets. I take it you're fond of animals? Oh, yes. I just love animals. Most prove to be better company than people. Is that right? Well, consider this, Mr. Fordham. Animals can't betray you or lie. Uh-oh, I don't like where this is going. My furry little companions would never hurt me. Unlike several humans I could name. Who are these companions, exactly? Why, my darling little kitties and squirrel friends, of course. And I disagree with her sentiment about animals can't lie. Sometimes I get home late from work and I've got three dogs. They'll swear up and down that my mom did not feed them. They're starving. They're so hungry. Please feed us, girl. They lie. Animals can lie, for sure. Tell me about your cats. They're the most wonderful little dears. Do you have any pets? 
Afraid not. My wife isn't too fond of cleaning up after animals. Pity. Cats make wonderful pets. They're good company and are independent, unlike dogs. Edgar and Hubert are my pride and joy. I give them only the best of everything, and they in turn give me their unconditional love. That's delightful. I used to have a wonderful cat named Tobias, but, oh, he had an unfortunate accident. That's why I never let my two angels out of the house. Your squirrel friends are quite tame. Oh, aren't they just the sweetest? And so smart, too. When I feed them, they come up and put their little paws on my hands as though they were giving me little squirrel hugs. And the way they look into my eyes, I can almost hear them saying, thank you for the nuts. Well, at least you can be grateful that it's only my voice you hear and not some rabid squirrels. What happened to Tobias the cat? Oh, um, I, I really rather not talk about that. It wasn't my finest hour. Let's just say it was an honest misunderstanding what? which got blown way out of proportion. Well, now I just have to know what happened. I hate it when people tease gossip and don't deliver. Ma'am, ma'am, I'm going to need you to elaborate because I'm having a flashback to that very jarring video. Was it tea time for two? Uh, don't watch it if you're easily disturbed. It's very upsetting. But, oh my God, did, um, 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 I don't like this lady. <laughs> Did you know Desiree Lathan? Not personally. I never met her, but I knew exactly who she was. And who was that? A miserable drunk. Always going out and getting liquored up at her so-called socialite balls. They try to make them seem so fancy and high class, but it's really just a bunch of bitter old hags getting together to gossip about each other. With that kind of lifestyle, it was only a matter of time before I caught up with her. Oh, were you not invited? Do you happen to know anything about the circumstances surrounding the death of Miss Lathan? I read in the paper that she was burned to death. Finally, in someone bed, who reads the newspaper it? in this That's game. Right. Do you have any idea how that may have happened? Well, I already told you she was a drunk. Maybe she came home plastered and decided to smoke in bed. I'm rather surprised she was sleeping alone. That woman got around, if you know what I mean. She certainly seems to know a lot about Desiree for someone who claims to have never met her. Thank you for the chat. It was very enlightening. Oh, my pleasure, Mr. Fordham. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get back to tending to my little darlings. We gotta find out what happened to Tobias the cat. I don't know if I want to, though. Okay, so our only clue still is burn cloth, Angela Maxwell's testimony, no suspects yet. Um, gosh, I really, I'm very upset with this. This woman has made me so upset. I'm like having a physical reaction right now. Mr. Andrews. Yes? Is there anything you can tell me about your wife's old cat, Tobias? Oh God, there's a name I was hoping never to hear again. She loved that cat. I'm sure she would have married it instead of me if she could. Mangy little bastard was always leaving a mess and knocking things over, but he was Peggy's little angel. Then one day I'd had enough, so I let him outside and... Yes? The stupid thing managed to get itself killed. Then things got ugly. How so? Peggy got a bit carried away and, well, let's just say I never imagined a cat could earn someone a criminal record. The plot thickens, or perhaps sickens. Thanks for your time, Mr. Andrews. Oh, can we ask Upton? Is it public inf is, is her case public information now? Got a moment, Upton? Yes, but let's make this quick. Have a moment to go over my current case? Oh, I'm I should have clicked on Andrews. You're on your own this time, Fordham. That's right. I'll still 
I need some information on one Margaret Andrews. Apparently, she has a criminal record. Margaret Andrews, eh? Give me a moment to look her up in the archives. Yes, here we are. Margaret Andrews was brought in for questioning five years ago in connection with a fire at a theater in Worcester. Oh? Yes. Nothing came of it, but she was briefly a suspect. Oh, there's more. She also had a prior conviction for... arson. You don't say. The file says she set fire to a cab after the driver ran over her cat. She served six months in prison for that. This was back in... 1835. Fascinating. Thank you for your help, Upton. This has been extremely valuable. So, Margaret Andrews has a jealous streak and a penchant for setting things on fire. Seems a likely culprit to me. That's it for now. Better get back to it, then. Well, while we're here... Pardon me, Edwards. Yes? Have you had a chance to look at those ashes I gave you? Yes, I have. Unfortunately, there isn't much I can tell you. The victim burned to death at a very high temperature. These ashes are greasy and putrid because of liquefied fat from the body, which burned like a candle. As to what caused her to burn, I cannot say without more evidence. I'm sorry, Miles. It's quite all right, Edwards. I appreciate the information nonetheless. Well, just so you don't go away empty-handed, have a copy of my report. Maybe it will be of some use. Thanks. That's all I needed to know for the moment. Any time, Fordham. Alright, this feels like a good place to leave this episode of Lamplight City, so thank you so much for joining me. Please leave a like, comment, or subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I hope to see you next time. Bye!